Hi folks, it's Steve here from Analytics in Action and today I want to talk about fuzzy matching and grouping using SQL Server integration services. I'll give you a quick overview of what we're going to cover off in this tutorial. First, we'll look at why you might want to use fuzzy matching and fuzzy grouping. Then we'll talk about some core concepts. So this involves similarity and confidence scores. I'll cover a little bit of information around the actual matching, fuzzy matching algorithm itself. Then we'll jump into a practical demonstration of fuzzy matching using first name and last name to match. After that, we'll cover off where fuzzy grouping fits into the big picture, so primarily involving removing duplicates. And then finally, I'll talk about adding layers of logic to improve fuzzy matching. Okay, so why use fuzzy matching and grouping? So what does it, these techniques do is they identify similar text. That takes into account things like truncations, missing or inserted tokens, null fields, unexpected abbreviations, and all sorts of other things. So for an, exa an example of a trunca truncation might be Steve versus Stephen, or an inserted token might be Sarah Jane being hyphenated versus Sarah Jane not being hyphenated. Identifying similar text is, is really relevant these days because Lots of businesses have data silos. So one thing about data silos, they're essentially um, databases or, or files within a business where there's no matching unique key that identifies customers. Or if there is a unique key, it may not be accurate. And you get these situations with company mergers or systems that are pulling in for lead sources or even just like poor business processes can contribute to a lot to the data silos. In order to communicate effectively with customers and to manage them, you really need all your customer data within one system. And this really allows you to run programs and build processes that where you can start growing, I suppose, customer value. So from a, from a lifetime value perspective. So lifetime value is, uh, is the, the average revenue per user times how long they're gonna, what the expected lifetime is times your gross margin. So what these uh, single customer lists allow you to do is increase ARPU by cross-sell upsell campaigns. It allows you to extend the lifetime of a customer by doing churn management programs and increase your gross margin by reducing your cost to serve. So for example, migrating customers from say paper billing to Electronic billing might be an example of how you could save, save money and reduce your cost to serve. Okay, so fuzzy matching concepts. Two key concepts are similarity, so that's how well does the text actually match. And um, typically we use a threshold where we say we're happy that a match exists where the threshold, the similarity threshold is greater than, for example, 0.8. And then we've got the confidence score. So really it's the quality of a match or the confidence that a particular row or particular name returned is the best match. So quite often you'll find that you may get multiple matches and the, the confidence allows you to pick what is the, the best match. When information is returned, you get a, a record or row level uh, similarity, a column level similarity and a confidence for each, each match. So in this situation where you have leads information being matched to customer information, we have these first two columns are the similarity and confidence scores, and that's the high level overall scores. And we've got similarity scores for both the first name and the last name in which the matching was, was done. Okay, so the fuzzy matching algorithm, I'm not going to go into in too much detail, but I suppose there's a couple of key concepts, and these are tokens and delimiters. Tokens are essentially how a piece of text gets diced up. Here in this first row, we can see it's 13831 Northeast 8th Street, and that gets broken up into these five separate elements. So that's the matching is done right across those five elements. And the other concept is delimiters. Essentially, delimiters will, will determine how that string of text is broken up. So in this, the second example, we can see that Northeast hasn't been broken this time because we've removed the dot from a custom property in the delimiter. So we'll actually see what that means when we actually jump into the practical demo. But you've got essentially a lot of control in terms of how the, the text is sliced and diced into tokens. And once you've got multiple tokens, integration services needs to retrieve the information. So what it does is it creates indexes to efficiently, efficiently retrieve that information. And that can be quite a expensive process from a computation perspective. So 
you've got a choice either to create the index on a fly or to maintain an index. In our example, where there's a demo that we're going to do, it's probably it's not significant which approach you use, but if you're starting to match hundreds of thousands or millions of records, maintaining an index uh, allows it to be, like I said, computationally more efficient. There's also a lot more, you can get into a lot more technical detail and, and learn about these things called error tolerance index and qgrams, but I won't go into that in this um, demonstration. So if you want to find out more information, there's a really good uh, TechNet paper on this. So just go to Google and type in getting the most out of fuzzy grouping and, and it should be your first result. So first of all, let's create a fuzzy match or fuzzy lookup, and then we'll do some fuzzy grouping. So first thing we're gonna do is open up Visual Studio. So let's open that up. And then we'll create a new project. Let's just go file, new project. And it's gonna be a integration services project. So we'll just call this, oh, did I spell that right? Fuzzy Toot, let's call it that. Okay, so in this uh, demonstration, we're going to pull in information from two separate tables. So we'll pull in leads information from one table and we'll match it against uh, customer information. So the customer information will be considered to be the reference table and we'll be comparing the leads um, against that. So let's put a data flow task onto the uh, workbench here, double click it, and what we're gonna do is create a ADO.NET source connection. Double click on that, we'll say, let's create a new one. Let's create a, a new one. We're gonna say, identify the server name. Let's just click down. This is on my local machine. Then we're gonna select a database name, which should be something like Sandbox. Test the connection. That's all good. Click OK. Click it. Just a little bit slow, so we're gonna pull in information from the leads table, the columns. So in terms of columns, we've got the lead first name, lead last name, we've also got the, also got the lead full name, which is the first name and last name concatenated. So we just click OK. Right, so now what we're going to do is to pull through the fuzzy matching or fuzzy fuzzy lookup as it, as it appears in the toolbox. Connect it up, double click on it to open it up. We need to create the connection manager, so click new. That is the existing one that I created, is fine. What we, so this is what I was talking about before, so generate new index. So every time you first create a fuzzy match like this, you'll get this option to create an index. We want to store the new index, and we want to maintain that stored. So we'll select a table, reference table, so customers. Okay, so that should be all good now. Now we jump across to columns and we here we define what are the columns we want to match on. So in this case, we're gonna match across on the first name and last name. So that's all good. So the lookup column is gonna be customer first name, customer last name. We could have just gone and matched on the on the straight full name, but this will do, this will be good enough for us. We've got a couple of different settings here. So we can control the number of matches are returned, but let's just leave that. For, and we can also set the similarity threshold. So this is essentially the similarity threshold for which values will be returned. So we're saying that here only return matches where the similarity is greater than 0.8. And down below this, we've got the token delimiters. As I mentioned um, earlier on, you can control how those tokens get split up. Okay, so now we're pretty much good to go. So I'll just pull through a um, another transformation here. So the derived column transformation, and all I'm dropping this on for is really just to hang a, what you call a data viewer on here. So 
right click here so all this main data viewer so that's good so let's just start that we'll see what comes out this is what the fuzzy lookup returns on the left here we've got the lead first name lead last name and then we've got the customer first name customer last name then we have the similarity so this is the uh, how well they match from a text perspective and then the confidence how confident we are that that row match is the best match and then we've got the same information essentially for the first name the last name so this these first two columns here are really aggregates across the columns that are matched and these are the uh, similarity scores for the individual columns and what we'll see here is we'll get some nulls returned and these are where the similarity threshold wouldn't reach that 0.8 threshold that we, that we specified so what we'll see here also is the we've got two rows that are quite similar so Stephen Smith and Steve Smith from Leeds matching Steve Smith in the customer table so this introduces the question oh well which which match should we use we can see that Steve Smith matches has the highest similarity and highest confidence matching to Steve Steve Smith not surprisingly there and that Stephen Smith has a has a lower matching rate so what we'd do is we would accept the Steve Smith match here uh, as opposed to the Stephen Smith okay so that's fuzzy matching or fuzzy lockups now what I'll do is quickly cover off fuzzy grouping and how you can use it to remove duplicate records. Okay, so let's go through a practical demonstration. So in the past, I've used fuzzy grouping to deduplicate leads. So quite often, a company will, will collect leads in multiple different ways, such as a, just a general inquiry form off their website, or there may be a customer name that's captured from a white paper download, or there may be leads being passed from, a, say, a, a call center. And if there isn't a unique identifier across those leads, you then need to figure out which ones are duplicates so you don't contact that customer multiple times. Okay, so let's connect to our lead source. This will be the same data source as we connected to last time. So adio.net, I'm just gonna to connect to the, the leads table. All right, let's go yeah. Leads, columns, okay, that. Now we're going to drag the fuzzy grouping transformation onto the desktop here. I'm going to double click fuzzy grouping. So that's fine, we can use the one we've already created. The columns, let's just do the fuzzy grouping on the full name just to keep it um, simple. So our input column is full name. We've got a number of settings here. We can set the minimum similarity. So let's just do that to, again, 0.8. Click. Okay, actually, let's just have a quick look in the advanced. So this is pretty much the same, same sort of stuff as we saw before. So token delimiters, similarity thresholds, which we've already set. So a couple of the key columns that we created from this fuzzy grouping is the key in and key out. But let's uh, have a look at that in a second. Click OK, that's fine. And we're going to drag a derived column transformation down, and then we're going to connect a data viewer to it. Now let's start that running. A number of columns are returned. The key column, excuse the pun, is this key out. So where you get duplicate numbers within the key out, you've got groups. And what we get is a similarity score. So we can see that Steve Smith is, is classified as being 89% similar to Stephen Smith. And that's really all, uh, all there is to fuzzy grouping. It's a pretty simple concept. Okay, so the last thing I want to touch on is adding layers of logic. So generally you'll be matching on multiple columns. So things like last name, first name, postcode, suburb, gender, date of birth and, and address. And you can use different similarity threshold for each of those pieces of information. So for example, for a high confidence match, you might say you want the last name similarity to be high, such as 0.1. The first name has to be greater than, say, 0.95. But you want gender, date of birth, and uh, address to, to match. 
And then you can have these lower tiers as well, where you might have, say, a medium or a low level of confidence as well. Okay, so that wraps up fuzzy matching and fuzzy grouping using SQL Server integration services. If you found this uh, tutorial useful, so you might want to jump across to my website, analyticsinaction.com. I've got lots of information about Transact SQL, integration services, reporting services, visual analytics, predictive modeling. If you want to get up to speed with Transact SQL, you can take a look at my course on Udemy. That's called Introduction to Transact SQL for Data Analysts. If you want to do that course, I've got a discount uh, coupon here for you. So analytics, 50% off, and that will drop the price of the course down from uh, $19 to $10. Also, finally, you can hit the subscribe button on YouTube, and that way every time I produce another video, you will get an email alert.